Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Medical Device Made Easy podcast. Today, we will have our medical device news segment of the podcast. Here is the agenda. Today on the podcast, we'll talk about a lot of exits from Europe, so Brexit and Swixit specifically. Then we'll go through the conferences that are mainly going virtual more and more. Uh, we'll also talk about uh, Greenbelt Certificate, your preferred uh, training for regulatory affairs on UMDR, uh, and also some celebration. And then we'll go through the notified body situation, the guidance and standards, and the podcast that happened at Easy Medical Device. So let's start now. So let's talk about Brexit. So this is the first exit that we'll talk about. Um, this exit will officially happen uh, January 1st, 2021. Uh, so what does it mean? It means that the UK will not be part anymore of the European Union. So for medical devices, this has also some consequences. And here, what we are trying to do is to explain to you what are the rules that will apply by January 1st, 2021. So the UK government or the MHRA uh, just issued a guidance uh, related to this situation and how in future you will have to place medical devices on the UK market. And there are some information that are really critical for you because if you don't know, then you maybe will be have to stop your business with the UK market. So let's go through the summary also of what are the requirements now for the UK uh, registration of your products? So, by um, first, what we what what was important, and I think it was it's one of the first things that the UK government said is the fact that all products that are already CE marked can still continue to be placed on the UK market until June 30th, 2023. So it's really important for the people that are already placing their device on the market. Uh, the second thing is also that. All CE certificates that are issued by a notified body located in the European Union, so the EEA uh, area, is still valid until June 30th, 2023. So this is also something that is interesting because they are, even if yeah, we knew since a long time the Brexit is happening, they are still putting some kind of um, timing before uh, things are changing officially. But there are things that are changing officially by January 1st, 2021. Let's move forward to that. Um, there is also something that is important is that by this date, January 1st, 2021, you should normally start to register all your medical devices uh, within the MHRA. But uh, they put also some transition period here. They said, for example, for class 3 and class 2B implantables, uh, then uh, those products will have um, four months to be registered uh, in the MHRA database. Uh, for class 2A and other class 2Bs, then it will be eight months. And for class 1, it will be 12 months. So you see that there is also some, um, some time that uh, you are doing that. But earlier the better so as soon as uh, you have the occasion to do that so do it immediately um other thing is the fact that the non ua uk based uh, manufacturer that is located in europe or wherever and uh, who wants to sell his products in the uk will have now to appoint a uk responsible person so it's nearly the same as the uk uh, the eu authorized representative but in the UK. So you will have to appoint this person who will represent you and do all the administrative work for you uh, in the UK uh, for the registration of your, of your product. Uh, the other thing is the fact that um, UK will also have its own notified bodies. So uh, UK will issue an accreditation for UK notified bodies. Uh, so this will happen um, soon. Uh, so you will have also a list, same as the Nando list. So we have actually the Nando database for the notified bodies located in Europe. Here we have a UK database, which will contain all the notified bodies that are approved uh, to give a certification uh, to the uh, medical device manufacturers. So this certification will be called the UKCA, UK Conformity Assessment. Uh, so it will be a, also a logo. So you can see that here. Uh, so this logo will have to be also placed on the products that will be sold in the UK. But one thing is important is the fact that if you have already some stocks that are, um, that are uh, manufactured and that are ready to be sold before 
uh, January 1st, 2021, those products are also are exempt to get this UK uh, CA logo because then it will be meaning a lot of reprocessing for you. So they give you um, this related to that, but all the other products will need to have this UK CA logo on the product to say that they are following the uh, UK uh, legislation. So this is really something important that you will have to understand and to strategize. As uh, Eric Volbrecht says, uh, you have to make a plan for it, so <laughs> uh, make a scenario. Uh, so do it from now. So imagine now how, what are the, the, ports for the products that you are selling to the UK and define now what you have to do if you have some modifications to do on the packaging, if you have some registration to do, what is the classification of the product. So um, if you have a big portfolio, you do it um, immediately. If you don't want to, be, to stop your business there specifically. Um, okay, so this was for Brexit uh, because it's a major change. We were waiting that since a long time now to know exactly what will be the rule. So now they publish the rule. If you go to the uh, show notes, you will see the link uh, from MHRA that is telling specifically all the rules or the guidance related to uh, this new, uh, new uh, registration. Now let's go to another exit. So Swixit. So we talked with um, uh, about Swixit with uh, Ronald Boomans uh, from Emergo on uh, an episode and also with Eric Volbrecht from Axon Lawyer. Uh, so we specified mainly what mean what what was the uh, the reason for uh, Swixit and mainly it's because there is no mutual recognition agreement um, between Europe and Switzerland related to the new medical device regulation. So this is something that was really that will impact uh, Swiss manufacturers if they don't have this agreement because then it means that they will need to have an authorized representative and an importer within the EU uh, region. But um, surprise, <laughs> there was a vote uh, that happened this Sunday, so Sunday, September 27th. Uh, the, this votation was uh, coming from the populist right-wing SVP uh, to um, say that uh, they don't want immigration from Europe to come to Switzerland, so to um, to restrict movement of European citizens to Switzerland. Uh, so uh, this was something that was um, put in votation, uh, like always in Switzerland, uh, so to the, to the older population. And surprise, six 61.7% of the Swiss population voted against that. So it means that they vote for the free movement of people between the European Union and Switzerland. And this can help for the medical device regulation. How can this help? So we have with us uh, Angelina Hakim from uh, Switzerland. So uh, Angelina, can you help us to understand more about this votation and what are the consequences for medical devices? Hello, Monir. Yes, indeed. I would like to comment a little bit on the major event that took place on the 27th of September. As you have just mentioned, one of the wonderful things about Switzerland is that the people have the chance to vote for or against critical initiatives and influence the decision making in this beautiful country. One of the most critical topics for the medical device community was the initiative to limit the free movement of people between the EU and Switzerland. If the majority would have voted for this initiative, it would have been the last nail in the coffin of the mutual recognition agreement, meaning that there wouldn't have been any hope for an MRA anymore. Luckily, more than 60% voted against this initiative and thus removed a big block from the way of the MRA between the EU and Switzerland. It is so important to have this MRA in place before the new date of application of the medical device regulation, otherwise there will definitely be a negative impact on Swiss and other medical device manufacturers. Of course, also on the healthcare system in general, due to potential shortages in having certain medical devices specifically on the Swiss market. Not having an MRA in place would mean that Swiss medical device manufacturers would need to have an offer representative and an importer in the EU, and Swiss manufacturer will have to update their product labeling to add the address and name of the new economic operator on their labels. Similar requirements apply as well on the other side of the border, where EU manufacturers will need to assign an off representative in Switzerland. 
Due to the relative smaller size of the Swiss market, some non-Swiss manufacturer would decide not to take the step and invest their money in faster growing markets that are easier to access. An even higher burden would also impact the non-European and non-Swiss medical device manufacturers because they would have to assign two affair representatives and two importers, one for Europe and one for Switzerland. Another challenge would be that the Swiss competent authorities will have no access to the UDAMED and thus will be totally blind towards market surveillance in Europe. Another impact will be the, on the legitimacy of Switzerland to have its own MDD and MDR notified bodies. As you can see, the list is long and as you go into the details, it becomes longer and longer. Therefore, we can still hope that the MRA will be achieved as soon as possible. Thank you. And now back to the studio. Okay, this was Angelina Hacking, so thank you for that. And uh, I hope yeah, we will really have some good news to tell you about that. Okay, so now we will go through the conferences. So you maybe know, but uh, we are under a big pandemic actually, so the coronavirus. And there is um, um, an impact of this coronavirus to a lot of the conferences that were happening all along the year. Uh, now, majority of them, I will not say all of them, but majority of them are uh, being uh, held uh, virtually. So mainly there is the virtual platforms. So I participated to some of them. So we have the GCC uh, MedTech uh, for Middle East, uh, Bahrain, that happened uh, this month, so in September, and I was a guest speaker and talking specifically about medical device classification all over the world. So just to explain the differences and the things that uh, that may happen. So it was really a great conference. So a lot of great speakers uh, that uh, were there. So if you didn't participate, yeah, there there there, were, there is something that is really interesting with the Middle East area is the fact that the regulation are starting really to to grow there also. Uh, there is also a lot of similarities between uh, the SFDA regulation and the European regulation. Still differences also, but a lot of a lot of similarities also which can help if you are already selling to um, to Europe to uh, then reach the, um, the Middle East market then we had also I mean I participated also to the FDA news uh, on UDI with instem so uh, I was talking with um, Kim Young from instem so about uh, the UDI uh, what is UDI why do you need that and I gave a specific speech, if I can say, I spoke specifically about the difference between Europe and the US. So uh, there is some differences uh, that are happening, but in majority, a UDI that is in Europe can also be applied to the, to the US. Um, there is also some new conferences that will come, um, but there is also things that I will be participating to. So the conferences that will come mainly is a top Ross symposium. So it will start uh, today, but for medical devices, it will start October uh, 6th um, until October 8th. Uh, so this was normally held um, not virtually. So last, last year it was in Ireland. This year it should have been in Brussels. Uh, but now it's uh, made virtual because of the coronavirus. But uh, uh, if you look now at the list of all the speakers, all the people that will be there, there is really all the top speakers of the world that are really are, are going. There is a lot of panel discussion. So if you are interested to learn more about medical devices, this is the kind of conference that you should go because there is um, a lot of discussion, a lot of of questions that you can ask and maybe also get a lot of answers related to uh, things that uh, you cannot ask a consultant or ask uh, anybody else. So um, I really encourage you to go to those types of, of, uh, of uh, conferences. Um, the other event I will attend is the MDG Premium uh, with Joe Hag. So Joe Hag invited me for the uh, speaking at the MDG Premium. So it's a, a call that we have every Friday. Uh, with um, um, uh, a group of uh, people from medical device industry. And uh, at this talk, I will sp speak specifically about economic operators. So uh, if you want, you can join. I will put also the link on the, on the show notes and you can join and participate to the, to the call and see also the, the, the conference. Okay, now we will go through your preferred <laughs> training regarding regulatory affairs and EUMDR. So this month I made an innovation with the Green Belt Certificate because we made it also in French. Uh, it was really a success. We had a lot of uh, students that participated, uh, a lot of students that were also happy about uh, the, the course. So really thank you, uh, thank you to, thanks to them for, for that. Um, it's actually last week we had also the English version of it. So I'm trying really to have this uh, this uh, training regularly every month. Uh, so if you want to participate, 
there will be a new uh, new dates for the month of October. So for the French version, the dates will be October 19th to uh, 23rd. And for the English version, October uh, 23rd or 25th uh, until the 30th. Uh, so this is something that um, is really important. If you want to learn more about EUMDR, uh, you should get trained. Uh, so I'm not asking specifically to come to my training, but you should really get trained on that. Uh, my The particularity of my training is that uh, I I'm really trying to put you um, in real um, real situation related to a regulatory affairs job. Uh, we provide a lot of assignments uh, where we take some real examples that uh, we are using to um, help you really understand what's happening in the real life for the UMDR, how you can uh, read the UDI number, how you can um, make a difference between the documentation that you will have to write, etc., etc. So don't hesitate to participate to the Green Belt Certificate. Uh, go to uh, school.easymedicaldevice.com uh, on the shop section there will be a link or on the course section there will be a link for uh, this new uh, these new sessions for the green belt certificate so waiting for you and i hope you will really enjoy it like uh, all the other students enjoy it okay now let's start the celebrations <laughs> yeah so this month is really a month of celebration uh, so um it's been now two years i started the youtube channel uh, so where i made all my videos inside so it's really a, 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 a big start a big event so two years now after two years i have another celebration is the fact that we just reached um uh, before this episode, before I record this episode, we just reached the four four thousand subscribers on the on the on the on the YouTube channel. So um, I know that a lot of people are looking at those videos without subscribing, but the fact that uh, there were subscribers are helping a lot because it's showing that what I'm providing as a uh, documents or, or videos are really helping uh, the community, and I'm really proud of that. So really, thank you for that, and really thank you for all the all the. Um, Think that you are telling me the messages that I'm receiving and everything. So really, thank you for that. Another celebration <laughs> for the podcast this time. So um, I got nominee, uh, nominated by the Topra uh, Award in the section communication uh, for uh, the podcast. So for the Medical Device Made Easy podcast. Uh, and really, I'm really also proud of that because the Topra is really a big organization. So uh, getting a nomination from them is really a, an honor for me. And I hope I will win <laughs> because the objective is not to win for winning. It's the the fact that it's a recognition that is also helping me to keep mo to keep motivated, if I can say, to continue uh, what I'm doing here, and also uh, to spread the word and that more people are joining us also on the on the podcast. Um, so the results will be held on November 19th. It will be also virtual, so it will not be like a, a normal event. I would really have liked to be there uh, as a, a physically at a normal event because uh, yeah, I saw last year they were always smokings and everything. It would be <laughs> Should have been really nice, but uh, yeah, coronavirus. So uh, we still have to uh, use virtual, uh, digital uh, tools to really um, enjoy those types of events. So really, thank you again for Topra for the nomination, and I hope really that I will win. I will try to represent the medical device community uh, at this event. So thank you, thank you for that. Okay, so now let's go to the notified body situation. So how many notified bodies do we have? But before that. How many days are remaining before uh, the date of application, so the 26th of May 2021? And I have with me Wish Michelle Lot that will make the count. So, Michelle, how many days are remaining? As of today, there are 236 days until the date of application for MDR. You better get ready. This was Michelle from uh, Linraka. So, Michelle has uh, also an hashtag MDR is still coming uh, so or MDI is coming uh, so that you can follow also on LinkedIn she's providing some great pictures on uh, on uh, entertaining you if I can say on on the countdown for the date of application for the MDI so don't hesitate to follow her also so how many notified bodies um, we have actually 17 notified bodies for uh, UMDR and still four notified bodies for IVDR and this month there was a new notified body from Slovakia uh, with the number 2265. So maybe go to the Nando database to find who it is. No, I'm joking. So it is uh, 3EC International from Slovakia. Uh, that will be uh, that is, was accredited now for uh, UMDR, so they can really help you also uh, to get your uh, certification. Um, so go to the Nando database also. I will put also the link on the show notes uh, to see all notified bodies that are available for UMDR and for uh, IVDR. Um, 
in LinkedIn, I have asked a question. So I'm, I created a poll just to ask a question after the announcement of this notified body. I asked specifically, um, do you think that 17 notified bodies for UMGR 2017-745 is enough? So mainly 90% of the people, and it's really a, a, a great number, so 90% of the people said no and 10% says, said yes. So there was 96 uh, votes that were uh, happening. Um, so after that, I started a discussion with also the people there uh, in terms of is it better to have more notified bodies or bigger notified bodies, so one notified body that has uh, more consultants. Uh, I thought for me it was better maybe to have bigger notified bodies because then they will have more power to do a lot of things. But uh, there was also some arguments from the fact that uh, smaller notified bodies are really also here to help uh, startups, uh, small, manuf small manufacturers that uh, don't have the budget of big multinational, which is also a good argument. So uh, please keep also some small notified bodies that can help those, uh, those manufacturers also. Um, great, so remember, don't wait. Uh, as we've said here, we, we heard about the countdown. 236 days until the date of application for MDR. So don't wait. Uh, we will have, uh, there is no time, if I can say, for you to be uh, compliant to EU MDR. So if you are still looking for uh, some support, so don't hesitate also to call me. I'm helping a lot of manufacturers now uh, related to the EU MDR. Uh, but don't wait, please. Even if it's not to call me, call anybody, but work with someone so that you can really be compliant to the EU MDR. And I wish you really good luck for that because really now we are um, nearly at uh, seven, eight months, nine months now from the date of application. So you should really be ready now or before and uh, not later. Okay, new standards and guidance. So. I was used to present you uh, new standards from MDCG, uh, but this month no standards were issued. Um, but uh, there is still, I mean, the MDCG group are still meeting. So here is the agenda that you can see and that you see that in September they met, for example, for Annex 16. Uh, there, there is also some meetings that are planned uh, in future in October. So I hope there will be more guidance issued uh, for you. But this month there was no MDCG guidance specifically issued. Um, in another note, there is um, uh, MDSAP. Uh, so MDSAP uh, updated one of his um, documents. So he created the MDSAP uh, audit app approach. So it's a combination of the audit, uh, the MDSAP audit model that was existing and also the companion document that was issued by uh, MDSAP. So they created one document and added a bit more uh, information about each audit, uh, audit process. So I think it's also a document that you can revisit just to, uh, to check if some of the elements, uh, you have, uh, when you, you have them or not. This document is important because it's telling specifically what, uh, an auditor, an auditing organization will be auditing you for the MDSAP. So it's really a good document for you to be prepared for MDSAP. I created also uh, a gap assessment tool for that. So if you can, uh, if you want to look at that, you go to the shop. So uh, school.easymedicaldevice.com or easymedicaldevice.com slash shop. And then you can uh, find the documents uh, to help you to be prepared for an MDSAP uh, audit. Okay, we arrive now to uh, the end and... Um, we will talk specifically about Easy Medical Device Podcast. So as I've said, there was this nomination. Uh, but this month, what happened? What were the topics that we were discussing specifically? This month on the podcast, uh, there was episode 92, where uh, we had Martin Witt from uh, Chief Sud, and he helped us really to understand how to be ready and to be successful for an audit. He gives a lot of tips uh, in terms of quality management system, in terms of technical documentation. Uh, we discussed also about harmonized standards. Uh, so there was a lot of information here that uh, will be really helpful for you if you are starting to be prepared for uh, a new MDR uh, audit. IVDR also, I mean, the audit, uh, the audit uh, tips, if I can say, are also applicable to IVDR. Then episode 93, we were with uh, Eric Volbrecht and we talked about GDPR. There was a judgment that happened uh, where uh, there was some information about uh, the rules um, in terms of transfer of personal data between countries, specifically here between the US and Europe. Uh, and there was really some imp important impact uh, um, after this judgment for medical device companies. So go to the uh, the podcast, so episode 93, uh, so to understand exactly the situation and to be prepared for an issue, uh, for a potential issue for your products if you are collecting personal data and if you are transferring them to other countries. Episode 94, uh, I had uh, with me uh, Cliff Bleustein from uh, Apostherapy. So uh, Cliff was presenting us the regulatory pathway. 
uh, in the US that he has made for his product. So it was really interesting to have this um, information from a, a company, a manufacturer, that is really telling us, I have done this, I have done that, and it was great. The thing that was really important here is the fact that with the US, uh, you can get some great support uh, from the FDA regulators because you can have some pre-assessment meetings, some pre meeting with them, so to talk about your product before you submit really the, the dossier. So it's something that is really helpful and you can hear uh, this uh, within this, pod uh, this podcast episode, episode 94. And last episode of the month, we had um, Margaret Jorvid. Uh, so uh, she helped us to understand how to register an ATMP uh, combination product so with a device. So uh, ATMP is Advanced Therapy Medicinal Product. Uh, it's the future of uh, medicinal uh, products. So this is something that is really important. Uh, there is not a lot or nothing, if I can say, on the market now because there is a lot of, of them that are now uh, in process for clinical trials. But by knowing that, you can also understand for future, the needs of future companies and how they should regulate their products also. So it's really important. So I really encourage you to go and to watch, it, uh, to watch this episode with uh, Margaret Jarvid. Okay, so... Thank you uh, for uh, listening to this episode. Thank you really also for your support. Thanks for all the uh, messages I'm receiving. Really, I'm really grateful to, to have you because it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great moment for me. So thank you for all that. And don't forget, subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And uh, if you have any need, anything, don't hesitate. Send me an email at info at easymedicaldevice.com. So info, I-N-F-O at easymedicaldevice.com. And I will try to listen to that, to, to answer to you. So sorry. Okay. So thank you very much. And I wish you a nice day.